Hey guys, uh, Jay here. Welcome to my second build guide video. So this is going to be a complete build guide for my current character, which I would like to call the Lazy Jug Daddy. This character is designed to initially to do juice content, so it can do all map mods. But uh, right now, the content that I am currently farming is Simulacrum. I can do it like very effortlessly, very easily, consistently, without even dying once in Simulacrum. The only time that I died in Simulacrum was on a very specific situation uh, with the combination of mods that uh, make the Kosis have a huge amount of cold damage and then also he has cold pen and on the flask I actually do not have the, uh, the, the, the cold, the sapphire flask. So that is the only time, and I was limit testing. I was standing in the in the D gen, and then I take the whole slam of him. So that is the only time that I have ever died in Simulacrum. Beside that, uh, all the other times, even though I just leave my computer and let the character just handle the content, uh, there's no other cases where Kosis can actually do anything to me if I uh, use all my defensive flash. Normally I do you know, just left out the one flask to put on the Quicksilver, so I just move around a little bit faster, but that is not necessary in the simulacrum. And also, most importantly, this one is actually a zero button build. The only active skill button currently I have on my skill bar, let me show you my character in the game here, is a frost blink. Uh, and just a normal frost blink and everything else is fully automated once you turn on the aura you can just walk around you don't even need the frost blink but you know just a movement skill that doesn't count as a button obviously so right let's uh, get to the build guy the lazy jerk daddy this on the screen here is what you could expect playing this build where while you're mapping by the end of this video i am going to showcase uh, just a quick um phonics map nothing special but just a quick phonics map to see uh, how the character is doing in maps but current setup my current character setup is specifically just to afk in simulacrum it can do maps uh, reliably regardless of how much juice you have on the map also regardless of the mods that you have on the map uh, but the only thing that can actually still kill this character in the map is the altars, where there are certain altars that will just uh, screw up with your resistance or screw up with your physical mitigation, and there's no way to get around that, so random monster or random big hit can just one-shot us, but uh, we are immune to everything else that does not just literally one-shot a character. Right, so the build full name is the Lazy Absolute Immortal Chat AFK Juice Simulacrum Farmer Cast When Stunned Detonate Dead of Chain Reaction Desecrate Purifying Flame Punishment and Rinse Charge Stacker AoE Stacker Consecrate, Consecrated Ground Abuser Auto Bomber Chain Explosion Zero Button Daddy's Home Bitches Build Or as you also may know as the Lazy Jug Daddy The Trees, the three trees. First of all, the ascendancy we chose is the Juggernaut. Uh, we take uh, all the entrance charge things and then we take Unbreakable as our last ascendancy point. This is very straightforward. I don't want to spend a lot of time explaining this, but basically these uh, provide us with mostly a lot, a lot, a lot of defensive layers and also some AoE scaling with the entrance charge, uh, mostly. That is what we mostly care about. It also will give us like permanent uptime of all full endurance charge if we want. Currently in the character, I am using the Ralakesh boots, but however, I also have a pair of Death Door with the uh, plus one uh, endurance charge implicit, corrupted. So I technically can have 11 endurance charges and the Juggernaut take care of the charge generation. Uh, secondly, the tree, uh, the second tree is the uh, Wildwood Ascendancy. So we are a primalist, and uh, 
obviously for the charms uh, the main point of this build I want to scale a lot of AoE so the charms allow us to do that uh, with the uh, AOE 6% AOE per endurance charge. We have three charm slots currently. I am using two of them for the AOE and one that which was taken. So uh, that is why we chose the charm. There is another way to to. There is another why would I see that you can choose. It depends on your preference. But the the warlock of the mist is also a good choice uh, because the the skill pacify actually is uh, a very good thing for single target where you can explode the the, the minion spawn from the, uh, the pacify uh, mark and then uh, proliferate a uh, ignite or just a explosion hit on the on the main target and then help with single target but personally I prefer a lot more AoE so I choose the uh, prime list here right then we come to the passive skill tree this i would like to get into the game so it is easier for us to to to, to uh, explain right so let's uh before we go to the skill tree uh, let me go to the charms so as you can see the aoe that is necessary the unaffected by bleeding while itching if you are if you are using the death door you don't even need this stat but it's a nice quality of life thing to have Currently, this jewel is about one divine, right? This one, instant leech, also one divine. This one, uh, currently, uh, we are not seeing any like this. But you know, the uh, the the damage roll here, the consecrated ground increased damage taken roll here, is not necessary. It's just an additional layer of uh, more in more damage taken so uh, you know you don't it's not required for the build to work but it is a nice thing to have the main thing I want to get from this charm is cannot take reflected elemental damage so I can just run every single map without looking at the mods before I have this charm I cannot actually run the reflected map because the reflected damage just go through all the layers of defense of mitigation that I have Right, so that is the charm. With the skill tree, currently, this is how the skill tree looks like. So the main point of this character is to travel all the way from Juggernaut to this area over here. Why I want to explain this area first. Uh, first of all, the Lethe Shade is the keystone that we really want to take in this build because it is the most tanky thing you can have to defend against uh, damage over time. Uh, second, this is a very nice uh, energy shield mastery. Uh, it's the only uh, energy shield mastery uh, passive that actually provides us with the same amount of life as a normal life uh, would, would do. Uh, that is my kid on the background. Right, so this is the, where we get the stun threshold mastery of energy shield for the blood notch and immutable force combo to do with the cast when stun that we are using. Third, uh, this is the suppression wheel. This wheel along with our gear and 12% from uh, the uh, elegant hubris here actually help uh, us to have a 100% suppression. So we are suppression cap compared to the normal like chieftain or juggernaut build any build that start on this side of the tree normally it is very hard to get suppression especially in our build we also use a ton of unique gear so uh, yeah I would like to come to this wheel if you do not have uh, like the hundred percent suppression from your gear by taking this uh, this area over here you have access to the chance to suppress the damage is lucky which helps a lot if you can just not get a hundred percent if you can have around 70 percent then you can take the suppress uh, spell damage is lucky here and you are pretty much set on the spell suppression and of course uh, for the detonate that of a chain reaction currently I am not uh, igniting enemies with this uh, detonated chain reaction I use uh, awakened elemental focus here so as a hit base 
and even though if it's an ignite base uh, these wheels over here is the most amount of damage you can get on the passive tree it scale the base uh, life of your the, of the courses you spawn so uh, yeah, it's a very nice wheel to have right so we move well, let's go back to the start here we go along the way and travel on the outside of the skill tree all the way to here along the way we grab all the life right we go through this armor and life and have the armor mastery of one percent maximum resistance very very nice uh, jewel socket this one is the, that which was taken for more aoe and some chaos rest per endurance charge uh, do note that you can balance out your your charms and that which was taken stat. It depends on what you can have on the that which was taken, and then you can get the rest of the things that you need from the charms. For example, if you have cannot take reflected damage along with AOE per endurance charge here, then you can just uh, have another AOE charms in this slot and have 60% more AOE. 60 or 66 percent depend on uh, if you have 10 in charge or you have 11 right so uh, we go up we grab the barbarism uh, and have the life mastery uh, of course grab the endurance charge we are under charge stacking a quick note we also anoint the endurance charge over here since we don't want to go uh, through this area cluster jewel uh, grab the cluster jewel on the way here uh, also note we grab a total of three cluster jewel they are all the exact same cluster jewel with um, burning bright smoking remain and widespread destruction this is the optimal uh, three notable for the cluster jewel for the purpose that i want the build to do which is stacking a bunch a bunch as much aoe as possible as you can see with this three notable i have 8% area here, 6% area here near the start. So for every 5 point to the cluster jewel, I have 2 jewel slot. I need a lot of jewel slot to fit in everything in the build and also 14% AOE with some other things. So that is the most important thing we get we grab here. We go up here and we grab the devotion. Uh, this section is probably the last thing that I will get in the last like uh, seven eight levels right so before level before you reach level 90 you will stop at devotion this section over here is what you got uh from level 91 and above currently it is no 91 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 i am currently level 98 right that is what uh the the last eight point that you will have on the current skill tree we grab the endurance charge a uh, jewel slot for the impossible escape this is around the hex master hex master is this keystone over here so it's a combo with the elegant hubris so we can take a uh, pretty good notable here this is a uh, hundred percent increased damage because it's ten percent per endurance charge we have ten and this is just maximum life uh, this very simple stuff um, the the jewel slot over here for elegant hubris is the cheapest slot because normally uh, you will not see anyone use this slot for the elegant hubris so it is the cheapest slot that you can have something nice personally I would just try to look for one of these nodes like uh, the 10% increased damage per endurance charge because it is just a huge amount of uh, damage for this build uh, so that is the best notable you can have as you can see I just take one suppression node here this is just generic life if you don't have this point you know you have a lot of life on the tree that you can take just like one point nearby no travel required right so uh, yeah uh, the next uh, thing that we grab you have the divine judgment here and then have the hits have 25% chance to treat enemy uh, monster re elemental resistance value as inverted this is extremely extremely strong and it helps to deal with the tanky target with uh, a lot of uh, fire resistance this basically just give us a huge amount of damage for a single target this uh, mastery also make me drop the curse uh, the the flammability curse uh, initially I used flammability but when I take this mastery I actually change to punishment 
which is a huge upgrade actually and I will explain when we come to the, the skill gem right then we come here we grab the armor and ma energy shield mastery and get the 10% armor also applied to chaos damage taken from hits we have a pretty good amount of armor nothing crazy but pretty good uh, so uh, this helps against the uh, chaos damage from hits very very uh, strong uh, defense uh, layer there then we come and grab the three aura note here I want to note quickly one thing that if you if you don't have the 8% uh, I think we need 6% here but uh, if you don't have the percent increased mana reservation on your helmet as the Eldritch implicit then you probably have to take uh, these uh, reservation efficiency notes instead of go the short route like I do here right but the thing we want to grab is the maximum and uh, elemental resistant we reserve some life with vitality and we obviously reserve uh, mana so we have that that is uh, very nice here I actually grab the burning damage uh, the holy fire here the main thing is just to get the 100% increased damage with hits against ignited enemy and also 20% global chance to ignite the chance to ignite the ignite only work for the uh, explosion from uh, Hine Hinekora's death fury which is the chieftain explosion node I have it through the forbidden flesh and flame here these are very very cheap one divine and this is also one divine because everyone playing chieftain already take those so nobody else is taking the uh, the forbidden flesh and flame that is why it's very cheap which benefits uh, us greatly in this build right so we take the fire mastery here you can probably leave this until the end uh, of the, your leveling before level 90 like level 96 7 8 9 uh, uh, no. Uh, no I mean no. level 86 87 89 90 should be your points there right we grab another cluster and of course the same cluster the jewels in here are blood notch and immutable force the corrupted blood cannot be inflicted on you you get on any jewel I happen to have it on the blood notch uh, for divine I think currently from what I searched when I set up this character this is the cheapest uh, way the cheapest slot I can get a corrupted blood cannot in be inflicted. Uh, in exchange, it kind of is a worst, almost the worst possible roll of blood notch. But we do not need a high roll for this. We also have uh, the defiance of destiny. We also have regen. We also have bleach. So we have a lot, a lot of recovery. We don't have to rely just on the blood notch, right? Uh, we come down three points here and grab elemental overload. Uh, the elemental overload is just a huge chunk of more damage for this build. We cannot, we do not have enough to invest on crit. <laughs> My kid is uh, demanding something that he couldn't have. So, uh, please bear with me for a second here. All right, he got what he needed. Uh, right, we we continue with the travel to this area and grab the uh, the jewel slot for the elegant hubris, of course. If you have a nice uh, thing here like a uh, suppress, then you grab this point. If you have somewhere else in this area, even better, you save one point, right? So uh, yeah, uh, this depend on the, the points that you take here depend on the elegant hubris that you have. If you don't have anything good, uh, that is the worst scenario. But uh, you don't, nothing here is actually required. So. It's just on the way and it's a good section for us that we can sacrifice to to get the elegant hubris right then we come and grab the third cluster here same cluster again this one i put storm shroud because i have the avoid being shocked uh, on the flask which is mage blooded uh, if you do not have a mage blood then your flask setup you should not do this and uh, you should not have the avoid uh, being shocked here Probably you can have avoid being shocked as one of the notable from uh, elegant hubris 
or if you don't have any of that source at all, just simply drop the determination and then run Herald of Purity. Uh, I mean, Purity of Element. So you have the complete immune to all Shock Freeze and Ignite, uh, and also any sort of ground effect. Right, but currently with May with the Mage Blood, I use the Storm Shroud. This one is a very cheap jewel this league. 40 chaos. As you can see, I have a random uh, overwhelm physical damage reduction here, which is doesn't do nothing, doesn't do anything. Probably I can replace it with like a 5% increased area of effect. That should be the, the best thing to have. And the Watcher's Eye, the Watcher's Eye here, if you want to have the exact same one as I do, it's probably a hard thing, but lucky for you, the, the only required stat is actually the Leech. This is a source of uh, Leech that I want to have um, for the build. This is the only source of Leech. So uh, we only run currently Vitality and Determination. So any mods with those two RS will work. But I think that this combination of the three mods is probably the best in slot. But the required one is only the uh, damage Leech as life while affected by Vitality again. right? And then, of course, we come down and we grab the section that I described on the beginning of this uh, video, uh, on the beginning of this uh, section of the passive skill tree. Right, so we went through the passive skill tree. I have a POB linked. Of course, I will put the POB, uh, POB link in the description and also might be in the first comment that I pin myself. Uh, so it's easier for you to navigate. You don't need to just uh, look at the screen and then try to copy these uh, characters. But here you have it. There's a POB for this current character that I have. Let's move to the next section, the skill jam setup. So we have cast when stunned, right? We have a total of three cast when stunned setup. First one is with detonate dead of chain reaction, elemental focus, conk effect, life tap, and fire pan. Uh, right. Just note right. that. Match. <laughs> Match. Right. Just note that uh, wherever you can have the uh, awaken um, gem, you probably should do have awaken when you can afford it. Uh, for example, in my case, I am currently. Okay. I am currently using Awaken Elemental Focus and also One, Awaken two, Fire two, Penetration. Two, wow. The Awaken Fire three, Penetration three, is probably the better three, upgrade compared to three, the uh, Elemental uh, Focus. Uh, no. uh, uh, sorry for that. Because the Awaken Fire Pen gives us a source of uh, exposure. So we do not have, uh, we do not need to have any other source of exposure on hit, right? Then uh, the other cast when stunned uh, setup is cast when stunned. Currently, I'm using desecrate. You can choose to use um, unearth as well. Uh, if you use unearth, you should not do spell cascade, but instead you do the. Uh, the, the greater multiple projectile or greater volley, whatever, and either of those is good. But I am using Desecrate with Spell Cascade uh, because I prefer the, the larger area of the Desecrate. The Unearth kind of uh, just focus all these corpses that you create on one small area. Uh, while the Desecrate spread uh, the corpses out uh, further, so we have better AoE coverage for the purpose of doing the Simulacrum. A lot of AoE just result in just much faster clear and also just more satisfaction overall. So this setup is linked to Empower, so it support the Desecrate. Punishment, so the Empower also support the punish Punishment, uh, which is very nice, and Life Tap. Quick thing about punishment so punishment is this curse over here why do i use this curse because as you can see here not only does the curse make enemies take 64 percent increased damage while on low life which is below 50 percent that is a very very nice amount of uh, more multiplier uh, it equals to roughly just a 32 percent of more damage uh, just all sources of damage 
and then also it has a defensive uh, just a defensive stat over here that is uh, the cursed enemy are debilitated for two seconds when hit the debilitated here is the enemy is basically less movement speed we don't really care about that that much but it deals 10 percent less damage this is global this is on top of everything and this is extremely nice i should upgrade this gem to the 20 percent quality so the debilitate actually lasts for three seconds instead of two two is probably enough uh, but uh, you know why not i don't think I have anything else I need to upgrade in this build. Right, the third cast win stunt is uh, with life tap, immortal core, and purifying flame. So the Im uh, immortal core here, I think you should use immortal core under one condition that you use the Ralakesh impatient. This is the setup that I have been using since at the start of setting up this character. Um, and I would recommend you to also use this setup first instead of using this uh, desk door. Let me see where the desk, uh, where where the the desk door is. I have very very nice desk door here. Yes, this one. So this one gives one more endurance charge compared to the Rara Cash. But if you use the desk door, you do not have like. You do not have the the special thing of uh, Rakesh, which, regardless of you have the charge or not, you always have the bonus of the charge. Um, the immortal call consume your endurance charge, so for a brief moment you might not have all the bonuses from the endurance charge, and that include all the resistant. Currently, we are resistant cap because we are considered max endurance charge. If we use the other one. In hideout, I would not have maximum resistance here, and um, I also would not. Ha I also would have less uh, physical mitigation. Mm, I'm not sure if it uh, counts to below 90%, but you know, still less physical uh, resistance until we actually gain the charges. We do gain the charge very quickly. However, just a brief moment can just kill your character. So. Personally, I still prefer this uh, Ralakesh setup, which is more quality of life, more consistency uh, overall. The uh, Death Store is extremely nice for another reason that it has bleeding cannot be inflicted on you. And that take care of one additional deadly element that can just screw this up, right? Purifying flame. Why purifying flame? Because we want to create consecrated ground with the purifying flame. The consecrated ground there is always applying, is always on the target, and it always helps to apply this more damage multiplier. And also, the consecrated ground is uh, extra regen, and if you need to, is also some curse reduction, curse effect reduction on you. I do have uh, over 100% with just this flask because I have a mage blood, so it's on all the time. But if you do not have the mage blood, then the conch round here will help you to deal with curses. If you have another, when you have just another flask without the increased effect, uh, you uh, have uh, just need like 50% more a reduced effect of curses on a flask, and then you pretty much are immune to all the curses. Very nice. Right, uh, the next setup is the Frost Bling linked to Life Tap and Calling Strike, which I currently have on the glove here. Life Tap, Calling Strike, so uh, yeah, nothing special. It's just uh, a movement skill where we want to do, for example, if you want to move around quicker, then you can use it. It is instant, so you don't have to worry about being stunned or anything, it's always an instant cast. And it's also a calling strike, so you know, just extra person, a ten percent more damage when you want to kill the target. You want to execute the target below ten percent. And the auras we have arrogance linked to vitality to reserve on life. We have purify blood, hero of ash, and determination are the three things that we reserve on our mana. <laughs> ah, trust me, you don't want to know uh, what my son just did. Trust me, you don't want to know. Mommy will take care of it. Please. 
<laughs> right, so we come. <laughs> let's let's continue with the video. Uh, this is uh, the core item of the build, right? This is the required or pseudo required item for the build to function. First of all, absolutely required for the build to function, especially in Juice Map and in the uh, Simulacrum, is the Brass Dome. Why is it so essential? Because it has the take no extra damage from critical strikes. So we are basically uh, immune to any kind of extra damage from critical strikes. And that is one of the deadliest mobs that can one shot any character in the game, regardless of what you do. Right? So the, uh, the, the armor also comes with uh, 5%, up to 5% maximum re elemental resistance, which is extremely nice uh, layer of defense. And also a huge amount of armor, the most amount of armor that you can have in the game in the chest slot, which synergy extremely well with the Unbreakable. Everybody who played Juggernaut probably know about this interaction, so I don't want to go too deep into it. Second is the Defiance of Destiny, which is this amulet here. Uh, just for the newer player out there who by some chance doesn't know about this amulet, I think most of the people who play POE, especially this league, know about this amulet. Uh, it basically provides us uh, the best defensive layers, the best recovery layers uh, to to just you know be completely immune to anything that does not truly one-shot the character. Because before you take the hit, you take you also gain the 42% of missing unreserved life before getting hit by an enemy. And this go with the petrified blood, which mitigate a bunch of uh, hit damage we take, and then change it to uh, damage over time, and also mitigate a a percentage of it. And you know. These two just just one. If you want, don't want to go to the exact detail of how it works. Just know that Defiance of Destiny plus Petrified Blood is the godly combo for just extreme tankiness, right? So Defiance of Destiny and Brass Dome are the two very very core items that we need to have for the this build. Third of all, the Elegant Hubris Caspiro, uh, so we can have the Supreme Ostentation. Why do I want to have Supreme Ostentation? Because uh, I don't want to worry about Attribute. Not because I cannot afford to grab enough Attribute to use all my gems. I mean, I do have 60, uh, dex uh, 60 uh, Dexterity here. It is only like 40 away from using the everything that I have, like 50. So, the worst case scenario, I take two Agility Point and a Glacity Point here. I have 60 Dexterity and, and I can do everything. I can uh, use everything. But the main thing is, the only thing that we care about uh, on the Attribute bonuses is actually the, the life, the flat life per two strength here. One life per two strength. And this armor, the Brass Dome, already removed those flat life. So that is why just take the Supreme Ostentation so it can transform some of the notable here to some other nicer thing like increased damage here, like maximum life here, and like suppression here. That is why I use a Supreme Ostentation and that is why I consider it to be a absolute required item for, uh, required item for this uh, build. For a start, you don't need to worry about the roll just get anyone to start and then upgrade uh, to a better one when you can find a good one and you can afford a good a better one uh, for starter just a elegant hubris is fine it is currently this league it is currently like 50 chaos for a random uh, elegant hubris caspiro right plus one endurance charge ring so if you are in a very poor economical situation financial situation is very poor you can just use a KOM sign here there is nothing wrong with using a KOM sign uh, and even I would argue in some cases the KOM sign with like the the corrupted implicit of uh, cannot be poison can be just a huge huge thing to have if you cannot find the uh, the, the the precursor emblem the precursor emblem are like 
kind of hard to find because beside I have to say sorry here but because beside these two rings that I have on my character if you want to search for this one let me actually search it on 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 the, the thing here like endurance charge and suppression which is the thing is that we care about let's put on the maximum life so it make sure it is the precursor emblem so we don't care about corrupted let me search as you can see there is absolutely none available at the moment and even if you go for offline there are only four other ones with the maximum uh, endurance charge and then suppress per endurance charge so it's very ex extremely extremely hard to buy so you know i can use what i had I just have one of these and uh, use a calendar's touch which is cheaper than both of this by the way uh, the thing why i got this through because uh, when i set up this character i search for the exact thing like this and i see two results uh, online one is the movement speed plus the two mod that i want and then the second one is the armor and the two mods that i want so i decided to just grab both because why not nobody is buying it so i decided to buy it and apparently they are pretty much pretty insane pretty insane and rare so you know long story short for a start just use uh, anything that has plus one endurance charge the suppression is only to make us cap at a hundred percent actual suppressed uh, suppressed uh, spell damage but again as i already mentioned before if you do not have a hundred percent chance to suppress which you remove this two ring you have uh let me see here each ring is 10 percent. so if you remove these two rings you have 80 percent then you can just grab the chance to suppress spell damage is lucky and you are not losing out on much right there because the, the thing that we also have just a lot more mitigation layers and they are very strong mitigation layers so in the case that you are not lucky and somehow a spell hit went through without being suppressed it still got heavily heavily mitigated through all the layers that we have as a juggernaut and as a uh, defensive uh, layer stacking character like this right next one mandatory item is blood notch and immutable force i would say currently the uh, the blood notch first of all as you can see i do not have a good role so you it you doesn't you don't really care about the, the role of the blood notch uh, if you can afford it then go ahead and buy the corrupted block and not be inflicting on you here it's just quality of life uh, like a four or five divine if you do not have it here you need to have it on another jewel somewhere and it is very hard because most of the jewel that we use are either very very high value like the that which was taken or the uh, watcher's eye which is very high value and hard to get a good corruption on them or they are already corrupted jewel like the forbidden flesh and flame this one probably no one will uh, corrupt. Uh, this one is also corrupted by design. And this one, the corrupted blood uh, immunity on the uh, Storm Shroud is extremely, extremely expensive, like 80 divine or something. But well, this one is only four or five divines. Right? So, Blood Notch and Immutable Force. Just get a pair of those. The higher the row on Immutable Force, the more comfortable you will feel playing the build and uh, if that makes sense but it does not really matter that much because if you are surrounded and con continuously stun chain right um, chances are you will uh, just kill everything and then you can move or you you don't need to move basically you are too tanky to have to to be an, an, an issue and then of course the mandatory item is the forbidden flesh and flame jewel for the hinakura's death fury here one divine each two divine for both very cheap very nice thing to have especially especially very very satisfying thing to experience in the game so i have the summary of the cost of all core items the, that we mentioned above 
So for the cheapest ver cheapest uh, possible budget for all the items above, you need 220 chaos. Uh, given uh, and two divine, the two divine on all these uh, represent the two forbidden flesh and flame jewels. If you do not have this one, then probably you need to play a chieftain version of this character before you can afford the jewel. Then you can be a juggernaut. The juggernaut have more AoE and overall, in my opinion, is more tanky. Right, so uh, 220 chaos for the items here unlinked and low roll, the defiance of destiny. This thing low roll is like 80 chaos or something. Just use them. Just use one random before you can afford a better roll. And you have um, five divine budget. If you have like a six linked uh, brass dome, uh, the thing is going for in the market. I think it's going for quite cheap. So I am searching for 3.9k armor, which is a very nice roll already, and also five percent maximum resistance which is the most important role and you can see there's a six link here for two divine there's a lot for three divines they are pretty pretty cheap right so five divine is the budget for five divine is the budget for the middle budget for the linked item and then middle row of the defiance of destiny and then my current gear with all the corruption and everything is around 200 divine Recommended uniques for the build. First of all, uh, let's get this one out of the way. Mage blood is just, you know, mage blood. <laughs> There's not much to, to say about this item. It is the one of the best belt in the game, if not the best belt in the game. And you know, your life will feel different when you have a mage blood compared to not. But it is very very nice thing and very recommended to have but it's not completely necessary for the build to function uh, and I will explain in a later section on how to set up the flux if you do not have the mesh bar. right second one is annihilating light why do I use this staff if you don't know what it does uh, it reduce our elemental resistance which is a drawback that we have to get around and we get around that through just getting enough resistance on gear and from the endurance charges, yada yada. Uh, but the main thing I get the staff for is because it deals triple damage with elemental skill. This is hands down the most amount of damage that you can get with just the weapon for any elemental skill. And our main skill to deal with the damage is the detonate that, a chain reaction, which is an elemental skill. So I would recommend you, if you want the damage, you choose the Annihilating Light. It's not required, but it's just a lot of damage compared to just any other option. Next, the Precursor Emblem with Maximum Endurance Charge and Suppress. I already mentioned the problem with this one. However, it is just a very nice thing if you can actually find one. Right? So, uh, not necessary, but nice to have. Then good elegant hubris. So the elegant hubris, I would recommend you to look for this stat uh, to be specific. The eternal uh, eternal dominance here, like the 10% increased damage per endurance charge. Uh, let me actually go to how I find something like this. If you don't know how, mm, timeless jewel calculator. Here we here, right? So you click on the this page, and then you choose the elegant hubris. You choose Caspiro. Actually, this doesn't matter. But choose Caspiro will just be quality of life when you search. You search for endurance charge, increased damage per endurance charge, and you put one. You click on the slot here, and you know it depends on which uh, which. Um, notable that you want it on but I would turn off all of these because uh, it wastes uh, a lot of points to get to these points so I would uh, remove these let me see in the game uh, which one we can actually reach yeah we can reach these these four so one two three four here 
We don't want this one. We don't want any of the one uh, on the below. So here we have two points here. One, two, one, two, one, two. And all of this around this area is one point. So let's just search for this. And as you can see, oh my gosh, we actually have a bunch of it. Oh wait, wait, I forgot to put this one. Right. So here you have a bunch of just uh, two pointers. So you just grab any of these, right? And uh, you can check if there is any other good stat. For example, anything that you want. Uh, on uh, these and then just choose one normally what I want to do here is just go ahead and click on trade over here and see which one is most uh, the most uh, the cheapest for example the first two one click was not cheap or not available so we click the other two here we have a three divine right let's move down and click on more 50 divine very expensive so no thank you this is also three divine probably is the same one this 12 but you got the idea right you just uh, click through and see if there is anyone that's cheap i think you will find something that is like one divine because that's normally how much is this going for Let me actually try to find a one divine. Just to prove a point here. And uh, there you go. There is a one divine. Right. But you got the idea how to find the cost of jewel. Uh, the, I mean the timeless jewel. The elegant hubris. Right. And the next, the last but not least, the relicash or the death store. So is your preference i personally will recommend you to have the rally cash currently the non non implicit non good corrupted implicit one are just like 20 to 30 chaos so they are very cheap and last but not least if you want to progenesis very very good extra tanky layers i don't think that is necessary from at least from playing this character so far so i decided to go with a bottle of faith for some extra damage and also the crit chance have to have with the uptime of elemental overload without the crit chance from this because we are still using rakesh we have uh, three endurance uh three power charge all the time so that is some quality of life in terms of keeping up the uh, the elemental overload all the time Right, so the total character cost, by my calculation, the cheapest one, the kind of like the beginning of the league or the, you know, Brook Boy version is the 5 divine for everything, given that you do not have anything linked or maybe just 5 linked, uh, bad roll, everything, the character will cost around about 7 divine. Uh, for some just decent upgrade, like upgrade these to six linked and a little bit improve on the roll, you will have like ten. Uh, you have twelve divine budget of a character. So the two divine here are again the forbidden flesh and flame. That is fixed. That is required. That cannot be changed by any mean, right? And then, of course, you can have uh, some, you know, mid step between these and then the version that I'm currently playing my current character is probably by my estimation around 350 divine in gear uh, in everything that I bought given that the price that I bought them for are might not be the same as the price for example this jewel I actually bought them for only 5 divine quite a long time ago but uh, this one is 40 so that's unfortunate but find one that works for you uh, and uh, yeah just keep upgrading because uh, for the content that this character is able to do you will you know you will make a good amount of money and you can upgrade your character further and further as you keep playing right next we come to the rare and magic items so the rare magic items we focus on uh, the rare items we focus on life 
the resistance that we need to cap out all the resist and then spell suppression. A very simple, very basic stuff. Uh, and then on the Eldritch Implicit, which in my current setup I have on the helm and the glove here, we would want the recommend the required one are the ignite proliferation for the chain explosion interaction between the chieftain explosion and then it prolif and then the the, the other monster nearby die and they also explode yada so it can create a huge uh, AOE coverage overall so we would want the ignite prolif from this source because we don't we cannot afford to have a fire flame uh, medium cluster we don't have enough point for that uh, then increase AOE in helmet you know more AOE more fun and reservation efficiency so we can make the skill tree uh, we we'll save one point in the skill tree instead we have on this helmet over here the cluster jewel so the f the cluster jewel that we have just uh, for the start you don't need to care about uh, which notable that you have the main thing that we the, the only thing that is required on the cluster jewel are actually just the two jewel socket because this build I use just a lot of jewel socket and I cannot just uh, effectively have them all from the tree so the only efficient source of uh, cluster, uh, of jewel socket is uh, from the cluster jewel uh, so uh, yeah, uh, if you don't have the money, you don't need to care about you know, the cluster. You just get the a fire damage or elemental damage a large cluster, and then you just use them until you can upgrade it to the one with the good notable, right? And of course, as much AOE as you can get from the notable if you have the money to afford them. Currently, the jewel that I'm using are like four divine each. I have three of those, so that is 12 divine. The flask. So, for the non mage blood version, uh, you uh, should have the flask with road with uh, gain two or three charges on enemy hit, and then the the other mod. This depend on what you need, like uh, more resistance, more armor, whatever that uh, you decide for yourself, right? Uh, but most importantly, is the gain charges on enemy hit. And then use when uh, charges reach full, you uh, can craft this using the instilling orb. Uh, so that will automate all the flasks for you, especially when you are staying in the simulacrum. Then the um, the flask will just be automated completely, feel like in 2-3 seconds and just use on itself. So you have 100% uptime of all the flasks. That is uh, very nice. That is pseudo mage blood. But of course, with the mage blood, your flask is much more powerful, and it has actual 100% uptime. So upgrade to a mage blood if you can. Right? I have a video. I will. You can either go through uh, search on my channel, uh, look on my channel, or I can link. Uh, I also linked the uh, link to the mage blood video in the end of this uh, video and also in the description right so give it a watch if you need it but if you can afford a mesh blood at this point i think you probably are good on your own right? you can see the uh, the setup of the flask you can see an example setup of the flask that i have here for mesh blood chance free shock ignite uh, elemental resistant avoid being shocked to go with storm trout and then reduce the effect of curses that is what i got Note, for the most amount of tankiness, use all these, especially for simulacrum where you don't need to move around at all. Then, uh, yeah, normally I don't need this flask. I just leave all the quicksilver so I walk faster, more quality of life in town and everything. Okay, last but not least, some extra notes. First of all, for the low budget, use purity of element instead of determination this because uh, a lot of our resistance is to cover the downside of the annihilating light annihilating light is uh, from the mage blood flats with uh, the 40 percent elemental resistant roll which is almost double by the flash effect so if you do not have a mage blood i think you are probably not 
cap on all the resistance so use purity of element and just remove the determination you still have uh, enough uh, physical mitigation and you still have quite a good amount of armor um, the purity of element also have to deal with all the element so you do not have to rely on the storm shroud and the flask as in the mage blood setup right so if you have a mage blood you use determination you have a bunch of extra armor you still deal with the other issues right very straightforward there and then please when you play this build prioritize upgrading your defense first uh, when you tr uh, have more money and you try to upgrade the build from a cheaper stage to just a better character like a stronger character just prioritize upgrading defense at the, the offense we scale the corpse life so that is like the easiest thing to get enough damage in the game without having to invest a lot in so just prioritize defense for coloring the uh, the items and linking the item as well i would like to recommend you to try out the tainted currency for example this chest i color by tainted currency there was a time where i have five of color in here I use, uh, but I changed. For example, before I use the flammability here, so this is a blue slot, not a red one, and it is a very, very strength-heavy armor. So normally, if you roll with the crafting bench or with just normal chromatic, then it will most likely yield uh, like six uh, red or five red something. But if it is a corrupted uh, armor, then actually, when you use the tainted chromatic orb here. It ignore the all the uh, the attribute requirement of the the item when you try to roll the color so you have equal chance to roll off color socket than uh, for the actual right color so it is very very easy to actually roll even six off color here you can easily get with just a bunch of uh, tainted chromatic orb so these are currently like almost eight chaos each I think this is a good deal to have. All right, if you need. Right, next one: craft your own life resist and suppress gear. This the, the easiest uh, way I know about is to grab a uh, fractured suppression uh, item, like in my case the chance to suppress here. You do not need fourteen percent. You can have like twelve percent, ten percent. Those will be cheap enough for the base. The 14% is overkill, is just like when you reach for something perfect or almost perfect, is the tier 1 uh, maximum roll. Right, uh, right. so uh, that is just like 7 divine, just the base with the fracture. So uh, that is something you craft uh, on the end game character setup, but you can also just get away with uh, like a 10% or above uh, suppressed should not be a should not be a expensive base item and then you roll it with the resistant catalyst or the maximum life catalyst um i mean the essences essences just know that we have a huge amount of essences especially when you do simulacrum like i do uh the next one this is a disclaimer that you will you will not be like actually afk on a low budget character maybe even the mid budget character you still have to dodge a few things uh in the general waves uh except for when you face the bosses and it also depend on the mods of the bosses i will i am speaking about simulacrum here then sometimes you will have to dodge uh, a move it is very easy to dodge it's not something that is very hard but uh, you should not be worried about it uh, that much it's just still very relaxing gameplay um, the other monster the normal monster the normal the magic the rare monster normally will not hurt you at all even on a low budget and then lastly in maps if you are playing juice map then be careful reading the 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 altars because some of the altars can actually just straight up kills you 
uh, for example, if the it has like minus of 60% of your physical mitigation or just remove like most of your resistance, that will definitely, definitely kill any character, not just this character. Uh, if you want to get around uh, more map mods, then I think the only way for this character to fit more resistance in is the, to remove the annihilating life and just use another staff. I think there is there will be a way to craft a just a GG plus one endurance charge or even plus two endurance charge staff to uh, just you know replace the annihilating light and actually still provide the similar level of damage, but for the cheaper budget then the annihilating line is just too much damage to give up so I would just read the altars and then make sure that you do not click on anything that's just instantly kill you this applies to every build not just this build so yeah and that is the end of the guide thank you so much for watching if you enjoy this content if you think this is helpful to you then please do consider to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this to come and see you in the next video this will not be the exact end of the video by the way i will continue to do one more thing actually i will continue to do two more things uh, should be an interesting thing and one just a random map so i am having the enlightened supports here i have six enlightened support this is a uh, a very very nice thing to uh, to to just put in your offhand while you do simulacrum because you have a ton of uh, xp so normally for example in uh, the in the start of the league you can put any gem here and then level them up uh, and then you can corrupt them try to fish for a level 21 in my case, uh, this is uh, very late in the league already. I can afford a Enlighten, so I choose the Enlighten to do here. Sixth Enlighten, just uh, level three, and let's do this one for the science. I think we failed. All right, so I hit once. The uncorrupted. This is a a equal amount of money compared to your non-corrupted one each non-corrupted level three is like 15 divines and one level four is uh 17 70 divine here this one is three divine so we have 15 plus 70 so that is 85 divine if i just sell them uh, all those for 15 divine each i have 90 so i just lost five divine there but you know where's the fun in that right let's just put the those in in the stash first put it for three divine and this one right here for 71 divine right and last but not least to end the video i would like to quickly run a uh, a unidentified um forge of the phoenix let's do maven so uh, i do have uh currently i am doing something that is not like 100 percent efficient i have destructive play and also eldritch gaze this is mm, just uh, because of the one of the challenge here where I have to run more maps with uh, these passive keystone atlas keys, keystone allocated. Since the start of the league, mostly I run the the red outer, but currently I am doing this, uh, a little bit more for the challenges, so I have both this allocated. Right. Let's go through the whips. I will not be too like min maxing with these whips because it will take too too much time. We are a zero button build. So everything that we can do actually is just standing there and taking the hits. Is there anything there? All right. They drop some uh, some more whips. I 
almost hit that. Oh, I actually hit that. Uh, yeah, I think there's an event here. It's not a good event. Since the start of the league, I actually have two divine drop from these things. Does anyone else have anything good drop here? Is, does anyone even have a mirror here? Not even sure. If that is possible. I think I almost ran out of juice here. Remove old armor, obviously not. Fuck that. There is no chance I'm taking that. Right, let's just try to mop up a little bit more juices. This is exactly why I enjoy Simulacrum so much. Um, I don't really enjoy just having to walk around in the in the dark like this and collecting the wisp before I can actually kill some monster. Right. Uh, so this is the play style of the character on map. <laughs> Not uh, exactly efficient for, you know, because we have to stand a little bit so something hit us. If we walk through too quick, then, oh, I forgot. I should not click this one. Okay, I will get out. Um, this is not necessary at all. Right. You can stay here. Oh, there's a uh, Harbinger. Harbinger. I am currently still using the. Uh, no, I should not use the Shroud of Shrine. The Harbinger. I am currently. I forgot what I wanted to say. Probably not that important. As you can see, very nice explosion. Pretty much uh, the chieftain. Explode the uh, cast when stunned, but you know, just a huge, huge more AoE. The huge AoE actually is the thing that is enabling us to play the, the simulacrum effectively. I have, uh, I think, I have two videos out that I that I was doing simulacrum, even from wave one to wave thirty already. So if you want some reference, you can go ahead and check out those video. They will be on the uh, on the end ending screen of this video and also on the description. All right. Mm, that's a weird looking headhunter. I mean, I can have more movement speed by using a Calandra's Touch Ring while mapping. This character is currently set up just mainly for Simulacrum, so I forego a lot of movement speed. I can also use a, a silver, silver Flask for a lot more movement speed instead of just keeping this very, very tanky thingy uh, on my bar. This can be silver. Right. We'd like to stay just exactly nearby this guy. I don't think he can hurt me at all. Alright. They call more monster, they explode, and that's everything. Right. Now, really, uh, thanks for watching. If you stay until the end of this video, and please do uh, consider to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. And see you in the next video. Uh, peace.